Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Klingberg Wing Mark II development. I'm your host, Raul Klingberg, developer of the original Klingberg Wing. I'm thrilled you decided to follow along as I create this new foot launch sailplane. This video is a series of still photographs showing the process, materials, and tools I use to build a 7-foot section of the rear spar. This spar will be used in a full-up wing section representing the root portion of one wing panel. The wing section will be used for structural testing. As always, remember that all information presented here is strictly for your entertainment only. What is shown may not be the final process nor design. Using any of these designs or processes for your own aircraft could lead to disastrous results. The first photo shows the foam and plywood core for the rear spar. The foam is quarter inch thick, six pound per cubic foot divinacell. Aircraft plywood is used at the root end only and provides a solid core for support of the alignment pin and attachment bolt. Carbon fiber fabric is placed around the core and molded to create a C-shaped section with the flanges integral with the shear webs. The spar is formed on an inexpensive male mold constructed of one by twos and a face sheet of high density particle board with a smooth glossy finish on one side. This mold is covered in packing tape and then sprayed with mold release to ensure a clean release of the parts. All of these materials are available at large hardware stores like Home Depot. The construction surface is a piece of countertop material that has a formica surface that provides good mold release. This picture shows how the core will be placed on the mold for forming the carbon fiber skins. The next photo shows the carbon fiber skins being cut to size. I'm using 2.5 ounce carbon fiber for the face sheets and 5.6 ounce carbon fiber for the root end doublers. Note that the face sheet fabric is cut on the bias. This ensures that the toes which make up the fabric are aligned at a 45 degree angle and thereby help carry some of the bending loads. I like to use painter's tape applied to the fabric before I cut out the pieces. This helps prevent fraying at the edges during the wet out process, keeps the area nice and neat. Also shown in the picture are two pieces of carbon fiber fabric that are doublers for the root end of the spar. These doublers are applied to the inside of the full length of the carbon fiber fabric. After spraying the mold with release agent, I position a layer of bleeder cloth. I like to use 1.8 ounce Dacron. It's cost effective and leaves a finish that yields excellent secondary bonds. By virtue of being thin, it conforms easily to simple curves and shapes. Next, I apply one layer of the carbon fiber cloth and wet it out with laminating resin. I like to wet out the fabric on a disposable plastic sheet and then transfer the fabric to the mold. This helps achieve a layup that is close to the optimum cloth to epoxy weight ratio of 1 to 1. Currently, I'm using poly epoxy from Aircraft Spruce. It has superior mechanical properties while still being reasonably affordable. It cures enough overnight to remove the parts and achieves full strength in 7 to 10 days. It is an extremely stiff epoxy which is needed for this type of aircraft. Although it's difficult to see, look for the diagonal cut tape on the corner. This photo shows application of the root end doubler. The fabric is laid up at 0 degrees to the axis of the spar to give maximum tear out strength. This doubler covers about 8 inches of the root end of the spar. In this shot, you can see the core of the spar positioned on the mold. The doubler is peeled back so you can see the core detail for the root fittings. This is another view of the core on the mold with the root doubler pressed into place. Here I've completed the carbon fiber layup by placing the second face sheet on the core. Notice that the fabric covers the full root end of the spar. This extra material will have to be trimmed away after the part has cured. Next, I apply another layer of Dacron bleeder cloth to the spar. This will ensure that the finished part has a surface that is good for secondary bonds, as well as letting excess epoxy squeeze out into the bleeder layer. This photo shows application of the breather layer of cloth. You can note the extra cloth off to one side. This provides sufficient pathways for air removal as well as a place for the vacuum pump fitting. Finally, I enclose the entire layup in a vacuum bag. For shapes of complex nature, 
I like to use the extra stretchy bag material from Aircraft Spruce. It's more expensive, but very easy to work with and achieve a good tight layup. You can also see the vacuum pump fitting and hose in place. To generate the vacuum, I'm currently using a pump found on Amazon. It is normally used to evacuate air conditioning systems on automobiles. It is quite affordable at just over $50. I've tried several different sources for the vacuum bag tape. I find that generally you get what you pay for. If you buy the cheaper versions, it will be harder to work with. The only significant way you can get a good value on this material is to buy it in case lots. And by the way, if you work in a warm climate, make sure your rolls of vacuum tape have release sheets between them. If you don't and it gets hot, you'll end up with one massive blob of gooey butyl rubber. Don't ask me how I know this. Well, I'm sorry to say there are no pictures of the finished part itself. This photo shows it bonded in place on the section of the wing I'm using for structural testing. You can see the root end fitting which has the alignment pin as well as the bolt hole for attachment to the test stand. In this final photo you can see the rear spar in place and how the C-shape allows insertion of the trailing edge ribs as well as an attachment surface for the aft wing skins. I hope you have enjoyed this segment of my flying wing project. Perhaps you've learned something new, and if so, I'm thrilled. If you enjoy this series and would like to help support development of this aircraft, please subscribe and go visit my GoFundMe site. The link is coming up next.